Welcome to the ministry of Barefoot Church. I'm Clay Neesmith, the pastor here at Barefoot Church. And man, we hope what you experience here today uh, will encourage you, motivate you, and inspire you in a great, great way. In the face of change, in the face of the unknown, oftentimes we'll kind of we'll shrink back. And honestly, I do believe that it is a time whenever the church needs to not shrink back, but step up. Now that may, be look, that may look different than the way we have been stepping up in the past, but it's a time when those of us who embrace the good news of a resurrected Savior named Jesus, it's a time that we can really step up and shine the light. Actually, there's a passage of scripture we're gonna look at today, and Jesus told a story right before he got to the passage, and he says, here's the deal. He says, man, you, you don't make a light come on and then hide the light. You make a light come on and then you expose the light in the darkness. And can I tell you something? If the church is the light of the world, guess what? It is a dark moment and it's time for the church to not be covered up, but it's the time for the church to, to basically expose you know what, who we are in this, in this world. Come on, somebody, clap your hands online wherever you are today. And so, again, we're a community of people that, that really strive to operate under the authority of God's word and his, and his amazing guidance. The writer of the book of 2 Timothy, and if you have looked at anything online this week that pertains to church, you've probably heard this verse uh, but, but the writer of 2 Timothy, he, he wrote Timothy in the face of some adversity that Timothy was facing. And he reminds Timothy that God doesn't give a, a spirit of, of fear and timidity because Timothy really needed to operate in such a way and step up in the face of the adversity that he was facing. And he needed to operate underneath the authority of who God said he was and the spirit that God had given him. So the writer, Paul, tells Timothy, he says, he says, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Of, of a, he's given us a spirit, basically, to step up, show up, and operate with sensibility. Come on, somebody. Operate with sensibility. And so, again, that's what we're going to strive to do, is operate with sensibility and, and, and operate where God places us with, with sensibility. I want to give us a good working definition of, of faith today. Now, there's definitely a Bible definition for faith, but I, this is a working, a practical definition of faith that, that I jotted down in my journal this morning, actually. And I wrote it down this way, where we take what we do know and what we think we understand, and we, we uh, against the backdrop of, of what we have not yet seen or what we don't yet know. Let, let me say that again. It's a good working definition of faith is where we take what we do know and think we understand, and we work it against what we don't yet know or we have not yet seen. So what I want to say to you, to you today, you people of faith, that you have faith in a resurrected Christ and the good news that Jesus is resurrected from a grave and brought hope to humanity. It's a great time to operate by faith. And our faith needs to be strengthened in a powerful, powerful way. Because the world at large is facing the unknown. In other words, day by day, moment by moment, right here in our physical community, it is unknown. What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen this afternoon? How many more cases of the coronavirus are going to show up in our area, in our hospitals? And there's a lot of unknown, a lot of turbulence, a lot of unknown circumstances in the world that, that we live in in the current moment, right? And so it's an opportunity for us to take what we do know and what we think we understand and place it up against what we don't yet know or we don't understand. 
That, that's how you operate by faith. In other words, you get a, a good working understanding of what you think you know, and then you have the opportunity to apply it against what you don't yet know. And so, again, that's who we are. We're a people of, of, of faith. And we're going to learn today how to operate in that faith and be encouraged in our faith and begin to, to hopefully move forward. Now, I don't know how many of you ever in high school or college, you, you went to what they call a lab. Anybody go to a lab? Science lab? Yeah. I remember in high school, I went to a science lab and, and, and what we did in this science lab is, is we basically uh, dissected a, a, a frog. Anybody else do that? Or a little small pig? Anybody do that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay, that's what you did back in the day. You, you dissected animals and you learned about, about things inside of the animal. But, but before you got to the lab, you always went to a textbook and you went to some classes underneath the authority of, of a teacher and hopefully the teacher gave you information. And that information you thought you understood or thought you knew and that information to the best of your understanding, you had the opportunity to, to put it into practice into the lab. And so in high school, the moment I cut into my bullfrog, okay, I, I, I was seeing things that I had been taught about, okay, seeing things inside of it. But, but the practicality of it is I was operating kind of in the unknown because I hadn't yet done what, what I had, had been taught. And I need you to know what we're dealing with currently in our society and in our world is, is sort of like that. It's a lab. And, and we, people of faith, have been taught how to respond by our spirituality in circumstances like we're facing now. And the question is, for you, no matter who you are, no, how, no, how, no matter how long you've been journeying in the faith, you have the opportunity in the unknown, because it is unknown. You have the opportunity. We, the church, the people of God, the global church, has the opportunity to step in to the unknown and begin to apply what we do understand and what we do know in our, in our own thinking. We have the opportunity to apply it in the circumstance, in the situation, in, in the lab. And, and Jesus often taught, taught, when he taught verbally, when he was here on the planet, he often taught in this vein. In other words, he would, he would spit out information. He would teach. He would share. He would often use stories and parables, we call them, analogies to help, help relate people to, to truths about things they had not yet seen in the, in the spiritual realm. And so Jesus would begin, he would, he would share truths because people haven't experienced things yet. And as, as he would share those truths he would oftentimes right behind those truths basically create a lab or an opportunity for them to practice what they had just learned about. And, and, and that's where they had to exercise this word we call faith. Do, do, do I have a little bit of it? Do I have a lot of it? Can, can I really use it? Can you use your faith? And I would share with you today, absolutely. Every single one of us have an opportunity right now as a church and as a family. And, and by the way, it doesn't make you more spiritual just because, you know what, you showed up in this room today. 
And, and what I mean by that is, yes, you took a step and you showed up among God's people, but, but they have been some people that just because they chose to stay home today, they're, they're, they're weighing kind of where they're at, what, what, what their family is all about, what they're going to expose people to, all of these variations of things. But can I tell you something? If you're behind that camera today, I just want you to know, just because you are not here today, does it make you faithless or, you know what, that we're more faithful than, than you are? We just happen to be here today. But next week, We don't know where we're going to be, all right? And we have the opportunity to step into these situations and circumstances, no matter where we are. And I got to reiterate today, you know what? The church is not a building. Man, you need to understand, I'm a, I'm a pastor of a local church, and I, I love to gather God's people together. But nothing pleases my heart anymore than, than a worship experience that is full of God's people. Because I'm inspired by that, you're inspired by that, we're encouraged by that, and we want to do everything we can to get God's people together in, in one place, in one accord, and, and running in the same direction. Nothing more inspires a leader than his team or God's people to be behind what they're doing, running hard, showing up, knocking it out of the park. Nothing inspires us anymore but I'm a person that operates with sensibility too. Because my Bible says that I have a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our sound mind through the process of all of this, and we're gonna step into our community, come on somebody, with the good news and the hope of Jesus Christ the best way we know how. And, and, you know, that may be that it's, we, we're choosing not to gather for a period of time in order to, to bring and suppress the, this virus that, that seems to be taking over the world. But it doesn't mean that we can't get together online. And so I'm trying to communicate to you today that we don't know what's going to happen next. However, what I'm also trying to communicate to you today is we do know or we think we know and understand what God wants to do. However, the choice of the matter is this. Will you operate by faith against what you don't know? Are you willing to change some of your ways, some of your practices, because, see, that's the, that's the heart the church really needs to have right now is, is I'm willing to change the way I practice some things in order to get the good news of Jesus Christ out. The message never changes, but methods have to. And again, we're not going to be a people who operate in fear. In other words, we're not going to be fearful, you know, every, every time something shows up around the corner. But we're also not going to be, well, let me just put it in southern vernacular. We're not going to be stupid. All right? We're going to respect and have sensibility and listen to the authorities around us. And we're going to operate in that pattern as a, as a church. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do through all of this process, through this dark moment, is be a light unto the world. In other words, it's, it's not, hey, just how many people can we gather on a weekend service? It's how many people can we really reach out to and they surrender their life to the good news of Jesus through this process. Come on, somebody. And so, again, I, I, I think we have opportunity. I really do. I look at this as a global opportunity for the good news of, of, of God to rise up. And, and oftentimes in Scripture, you see these opportunities. We, we read past them. We, they're historical moments at the growth of, of the church, God's kingdom here on earth as it was in heaven. 
And I'm probably next week, and if it's online, it'll be online, I'm going to talk a little bit through one of those, those, those global challenges, those, those moments when, when the church exploded and, and grew. But for the moments we have together today, I want to really inspire your faith. And no matter whether you're on the camera, behind the camera, or behind, actually, I guess, the screen, the camera's in the room, okay? But if you're on the screen somewhere else, I want to inspire your faith. If you're in the room today, I want to inspire your faith. So here's the quick story found in Mark chapter, chapter four. And again, against the backdrop of Jesus teaching in parables, many parables, Parables about small things growing large. Parables about uh, light shining in the darkness. The Bible says that that Jesus has the opportunity to create a lab. And so he creates a lab for people to practice what he just taught them. And look what it says here in Mark chapter 4. By the way, Mark is is the gospel writer that gives us a snapshot of, of Jesus as a servant. In other words, the different, the different writers of the Gospels, they present the same message, but through, through different lenses. And so you understand the Gospel writer Mark presents Jesus as, as a, a servant, a, a, a one who is deity, but he came to serve. He, he came to serve humanity. And, and so lots of the writings that Mark recorded was, was deity, was Jesus serving and inspiring and, and helping, helping people connect to God through his, through his servant's heart. And so the Bible says this, that in Mark chapter four, as, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, hey, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind. Pay close attention to this parenthesis. Although there were other boats that followed, there was other boats surrounding them. It was a, a, a group of boats going in the same direction. But soon a, a fierce storm came. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. The boats began to fill with water. Now, again, there's, there's some unknown things going on here. There's a storm, the boat's filling up with water, and the logical question that I would ask and probably you would ask, is it going to fill up in such a way that the boat is going to completely sink and we're going to die right here in this sea? You know, any person thinking sensibly would, would probably do the same thing these disciples did. The Bible says this, well, Jesus, he was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. He had his head on a a pillow. And the disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? I would have asked the same exact question. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped. And there was a great calm. And then he asked them, why are you afraid? Duh. And my answer at that point would have been not because the waves stopped filling the boat, but you just did the incredible. And that scares me to death. (laughs) Have you ever thought about that? If God suddenly shows up and does the unbelievable in your circumstance or your situation or the world situation, what the world should do is not be like, Oh, we were so scared because of the epidemic. No, what the world should do is respond and know and fear a God who has the power to speak suddenly and stop anything from spreading in this earth. 
And the question for you and me right now, as people of faith, are we expecting God to show up? But when he does show up, are you going to be in awe and, 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 and in, a, in a reverent way respect God's hand in this world? Because, because I do believe that the God I serve, the God I believe in, has the power to speak suddenly and basically heal the nation, heal the world of an epidemic that is spreading throughout the world. But can I tell you something? I need to understand that when he does do what he is going to do, then we as a people of faith need to respond with great reverence towards this great God. And and then the Bible says this. It says, do you still have no faith? Is the question Jesus asks them. The Bible says the disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? See see what they were terrified of? It wasn't the ways. Who is this man? It says they were terrified. Who is this man? They ask each other. Even the wind and the ways obey him. A lot of people read this passage and think that these guys were were basically fearing the storm. But honestly, yes, the storm frightened them. They woke Jesus up. But when Jesus' power showed up on the scene, they, they, they turned their hearts and their respect towards, towards something they had never basically experienced before or, or seen before. And, and it was a... It was a a right kind of fear or respect for God. And and what I'm trying to say is is God isn't common. Okay, I I need you to know that. He's not like any other God and he's, he's not like you or me. Though he became human and he put on flesh and he became like us, he, he, the Bible says his ways are higher than our ways. He knows more than our human understanding or our collective human understanding can figure out in this earth. That doesn't mean that we operate as as people of, of no sensibility, but we do operate as people of sensibility and, and we walk with God, we trust God, we believe the God who, who brought us out of darkness into the wonderful light is the same God that's going to show up. I don't know how he's going to show up. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know how his kingdom and his church are going to explode through all of this. But based on my understanding of who God is and my reading and what I have been taught from the word of God, my faith is inspired in this. And the reason my faith is inspired in this is there's a song we sing here at Barefoot Church. You did it once, you'll do it again. Come on, somebody. And the question is this, do you really believe what the scripture says and all these stories that Jesus told? He says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It'll start really small, but then it's going to become the biggest, the kingdom of God. Not not just the church. The church is a part of the kingdom, okay? But he says, then it's going to grow really large, and it's going to take over all nations. It's going to take over all dominions. And and what you got to grab hold of is do you really by faith believe that? We're, you know, what we've seen growth wise in the church up to this point in 2019 is what I want to call mustard seed growth. But you need to understand that the kingdom will grow (laughs) into the largest plant in the garden, is what my Bible says. And so I don't look like, to me, it doesn't look like 
And again, I, I don't have all the answers. I'm not, I, you know, I, I, I'm not some crystal ball reader, all right? I'm not a psychic or something or whatever you want to call it. No, I'm, I'm a man of faith. And I believe my great God. And I believe what I'm going to believe in the future based on what my foundation is, what I have stood on, what I do know about what he has done up to this point. And if you're going to operate with sensibility, you can't second guess how, you know, the church is going to explode and the kingdom is going to explode. But what you can do is you can trust it's going to happen. Get in the middle of it with power, love, and a sound mind and let God do what he's going to do because Jesus declared. He declared in a parable, in a story right before this storm about where is your little faith. He declared that the kingdom's going to be a lot like a little small mustard seed. And eventually, it's going to grow. It's going to explode. It's going to fall on all kinds of souls, all kinds of hearts. And he says, you know what's going to happen? It's going to take root in some of those hearts. It's going to do, do miracles. And, and again, I believe that with my heart. That, that's what it means to operate by faith. But, but what, it, what it doesn't mean is I got it all figured out. And, and, and what you need to understand is nobody has it figured out. The scientists don't have it figured out. The governments don't have it figured out. The, 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 the church don't have it. Nobody has it figured out. It's unknown. It is shaking this earth. Now, in, in, inside of you, you can choose to disbelieve the facts of what are happening. And, and just be oblivious to it. Never watch the news again. Never pay attention to, to the authorities again. You, you, can, you, know, you can put on this, this false sense of spirituality and just say, oh no, praise God, no, it ain't real. No, it's real. But God's real too. And so why don't you let your faith trump what's happening around us? And my friend, what I want to declare today, out of this passage, we see three things. And I would jot them down because in the weeks to come, the months to come, maybe even the years to come, you're going to need to grab hold of this truth with your faith in Jesus. You need to understand that first and foremost, in this passage of scripture, though Jesus was asleep, Jesus stepped up. And I need you to know today that Jesus is God in the flesh. And though you may think God is asleep, during a time like this, I need you to know it's times like this that awakens something in God and his heart for humanity. And, and, and so fear had, had these people uh, trembling, but, but Jesus gets up and he steps up. Next, I want you to notice something. He didn't only step up, he shows up and he speaks up. You may want to write this stuff down because you're going to need to remember it over the next several days and weeks. Jesus, God in the flesh, he doesn't only get up off of his pillar, Pella, he suddenly and he speaks. He speaks to the storm. Can I tell you something? That's a picture of who we need to be. We're followers of Christ, right? Amen. All right? We're, 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 we're the church. We're the hands and feet of Jesus. Paul wrote to Timothy and says, God hasn't given you a spirit of, of fear and timidity. He's given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So again, I do believe power doesn't mean like, you know what, we're, we're powering over you. We're, we're, we're a bunch of bulls in the gym and we got more power than you. No, no, that's not what it means. What, what it means is, is, you know what, we have some anxieties and some fears and some circumstances going on too, but we operate by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and we step up. The church, God's people, step up when everything else shrinks back. Man, man that's how you operate in power. You, 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 you get up, you step up. You know, you know, Jesus got up from a grave and he stepped out of that grave through all the ridicule, the cruel, the shame, and, and it's to demonstrate one clear thing to you and me. That in a moment, God can turn death into life. In a moment, come on. In a moment, suddenly the Bible says Jesus spoke in the suddenly the way stopped. Okay, you need to understand our faith in God is that God gets up, He shows up, and, and that's, that's His power. That needs to be our power as we expose who God is to the world. God, God has compassion. God says we have a spirit of love. What is, what is love? We, we, we don't only come into the world, we come with passion. We, you know, we, we want to see healing. We want to see physical healing. We want to see spiritual healing. We want to see mental healing. We want to see relational healing. We want to see all of these things healed throughout the world. And so love means I come with passion, okay? But I do all of this with sensibility, with a sound mind. I, I'm, I'm, you know, the thing is, is because, because that's the spirit God gives his people. And there's no better time than the church to operate with a sound mind, with sensibility. My friends, we have opportunity. And again, you know what? At the end of the day, I have some of the same fears and anxieties that you do. And, and you know, there's going to be times that when, when they say don't go here, don't go there, I, I'm, I'm going to do what they say do, and I'm going to go into isolation, so to say. But, but that doesn't mean I can't trust God. That doesn't mean I can't pick up my phone in the modern day technology and text one of you and say, hey, how y'all doing today? That doesn't mean you can't FaceTime your neighbor. That don't mean that, you know what, you can't, you can't get on some, and again, I don't know all the terminology for all this, but we got some experts that do. You can't get on Zoom and have a small group meeting. See, I, I, I really think it's time to church, especially some of us, us folks that say, oh man, I ain't into technology. Well, maybe it's time that you get trained in technology because, because maybe this is an opportunity for you to meet together with, on a screen for a minute know the power of God and encourage one another and get with them, not as an excuse to, to, to lay down and quit but it's an opportunity man and again I, I, I listened to one of these uh, uh, pastors this week uh, he pastors a great church in our land Craig Groeschel and he had to self quarantine himself for 14 days and I was listening to him because he had been on some trip to Germany he had come back to the U.S. And he had to go into his bedroom, couldn't see his wife, couldn't see his family, had to self-quarantine for 14 days. And he shot out a few Instagrams and a few things. And though he wasn't down trying to, woe is me, poor old me, I got to stay in here by myself. But on the other side, he's like, dude, I'm miserable. Because humans weren't meant for isolation. We were meant to, to be in community, to, to do life together. And I know sometimes people wear you out. But, but this isn't a time to, to shrink back, church. This is a time to embrace new things, new ways, new times. And let's get the good news of Jesus out around the world. May we be, come on, clap your hands. May, may we be a people that operates with, with power, love, and a sound mind. And again, it's, it's not just sticking your chest out and, and saying, man, I'm all that in a bag of chips. It's not, it's not just lip service, it's faith service. So what is faith again? A good working definition for that word called faith is this. Taking what I do understand and what I think I understand or what I do know and I think I understand and practicing it in the face of the unknown or what I have not yet seen. 
My friends, that is who we are as a church. Be encouraged. Don't give up. Don't quit. May we not keep, you know what, may we not stop serving our world. Because the Bible says that the world will know that we're God's disciples, Jesus' disciples, by our love for one another and through our service during times such as this. So we want to be a church that serves. We want to be a church that's generous. Can, can I tell you something? And again, I, I mean this in all due respect. It's kind of, kind of funny, but, but toilet paper's in a short supply. Man, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I went to the grocery store last night and it was, it was like pandemonium in the grocery store, people trying to get toilet paper. And again, if, if you got a well stock and, and your neighbor don't have some toilet paper, why, why don't you give them a roll of toilet paper? That would be a good way to, to show them amazing, amazing kindness. And again, I, 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 I know we're all facing this thing together, but let's be a hospitable church. Let's be a loving church. Let's be a caring church. Let's be a church that operates in the face of this world world epidemic and this fear that everybody is facing including many of us let's operate by faith in spite of our fear it doesn't mean you don't take proper precautions it doesn't mean you don't use your sensibility it doesn't mean you, you don't do social distancing it doesn't mean that you choose not it don't make you you know what more of a a stronger person, you know, because you're going to pass your germs to somebody else because you are so into showing them that you're the man and you can shake their hand. Well, what if you're the carrier of the coronavirus? Have the dignity for fellow humanity and don't have to show up and show how powerful and strong you are. Care about maybe them and, 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 and kind of keep your distance and guard, guard that. See, that's operating with compassion. That's operating with love. That's operating, you know what, by faith. And so again, I'm honored you are here today. And again, I, there's a tendency for people to make excuses and not come to meetings like this too because, oh, this is this and this. And again, I, I really think, Ms. Paula, I think there's a balance in it. I, I really do. I think we're to be responsible but we also have to respond properly. And, and, and again, it's not just, we have a responsibility in all of this, personally, as a, as a church, as a community of believers, but, but we also have to be responsible in our, our response to the community. And so there's a balance in there. So you pray, you seek God, we seek God. And let's see what God can do through all of this. Let me pray for you today. God, I thank you so much for the incredible faith we have as a, as a people. And God, sometimes I know my faith is really small. And, and sometimes, God, in circumstances, I feel like I got great faith, strong faith. But God, you are developing your church during this season. You are developing us to be a faith-filled people, a people full of power, love, and a sound mind. You're, you're bringing sensibility to us. You're bringing the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit into our life. And God, you're bringing the great love and compassion that you have for all humanity through this epidemic. And God, we know this. It is an awful thing. It is a bad thing. But we claim your word today that you're a God who works together to the good for all of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. God, we claim that truth today. We believe that truth today. And God, we're gonna be a people with sensibility, sensitivity, God. Also, God, we're gonna be a people that, that operate audaciously through all of this. God, may we have respect for our neighbor. May we honor where people are in their journey. And God, may we lead people to you through Christ Jesus during this season. God, may your power show up greatly 
in our weakness. May we see you do the miraculous. God, I pray for an outpouring of generosity during a season like this. God, when death seems to be knocking at the door, it is when you poured out the most generosity ever to humanity by giving the life of your one and only son on that cross. So God, thank you for that. It's a dark season, but God, the light can shine bright. May we be that people in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody. We hope you were encouraged, motivated, and inspired today by the message. And again, man, we believe in you. We believe great things for you. It's because of many people's faithful giving that we're able to go out around the world. If you choose to invest in Barefoot Church, just go on over to barefootchurch.com. You can give there. But go out, live your purpose, and be inspired in a great, great way.